So today I'm going to do a review of the Tarte B Magnificent Palette. Now, I haven't had this for long and usually I like to wait a couple weeks, um, at least uh, several weeks before I review a product, but I kind of already formulated my opinions very quickly on this product and I could not wait to share my thoughts with you. So if you haven't seen my Valentine's Day date night video tutorial that's already up, I will link to it below because I use this palette and I use it today, some of it, um, for my look, but then I did add a couple of different colors from my Lorac Pro. Um, just to kind of go along with my two eyeliner. I didn't feel like these plums really went with that. So this is what it looks like. Um, and, oh, hello. And I have um, pictures and swatches on my blog. So I'll put a link to that below as well so you can get kind of my thoughts on it. Um, so right off the bat, I do have to talk about the packaging. Um, I love the outside of it. It's super cute. Very, very cute. And I can see myself having this out on display. Um, it has a nice little mirror here, but I won't blind you with the lights here, but it's got a nice size mirror where if I had to use this for my complete look, I could see myself and feel like I could, you know, really get in there and do what I gotta do, right? So, then I get into the eyeshadows and the blushes and the liners. Um, I just, I like the idea of this and I'm really kind of disappointed on it, honestly, because I have high hopes for Tarte. Tarte is a fantastic cosmetic line. I love almost everything that I try. Um, I do love the blush. I, I'm wearing the blush today. It's just a natural color that doesn't take away from my eye look. Um, it's not too much. It's not too harsh. It's a nice um, kind of mauve a little bit of a rosy tone. Very natural. So I like that because this is one of their Amazonian um, blushes, which I have tons of those. And I love them. Um, as far as the eyeshadows, I like the concept of having all mattes. And the reason why is because it's always good to have some mattes in your collection, whether it's just a couple individuals, a palette like this. This is good to have because sometimes you just need a matte shade to blend some colors out. And I feel like if that's what you wanted this palette for, it would do the job. Um, but I do have to mention that they are very powdery. Um, there's a lot of fallout, even with the lighter shades. I have to keep cleaning up my under eye area and kind of do my concealer last because it's just, the fallout is really intense. And I have to say this plum shade, it's really pretty and you look at it and say, wow, that's that's a nice plum color, but you have to work really hard to kind of blend this color. And as you probably saw if you watched the tutorial, I had to kind of fast forward through some blending because it was kind of patchy, not really smooth, didn't really blend well. And I have some mattes from like, let's say for, for example, the Lorac Pro Palette that just feel like butter. And these are feel like butter, but they don't really blend that well and they come across that that purple is pretty intense when you swatch as you can see, but when you go to um, blend it on your lid, it kind of just doesn't stick to the skin, it kind of starts to fall, and it's just not really blendable. Now, let me just kind of put some plum, get some tissue. <laughs> um, I do like this, this pink here, it's more of like a brightening pink, it reminds me of Eye Bright from Benefit, which I like, and it's just nice and bright. Um, I like the colors, I mean they show up. As you guys can see, these two colors are Rose to the Occasion and View from the Taupe. So, view, um, Rose to the Occasion and View from the Taupe, probably not going to be able to see, but there's not that much contrast between them. Now, on me, if I really blend this and build this up, you can see it because I'm so fair, but if you're medium, tan, or deeper, they're all going to start to look the same when you start to blend them out. There's not going to be variations between the Taupe and the Rose. You're not going to be able to see, oh, that's a beige, that's a pink, you know, it's all going to look the same. Um, I like this color, um, Peach peach for the Stars. It's a nice kind of matte peach color that I like to use for a highlight. And today's look, I did the pink outside the box, which is this bright pink on my lid. Then I did the sand out from the crowd, which is this ivory color for my brow highlight. I mixed the two for my inner corner. And then for my crease, I went with the view from the taupe because it's more of like a natural color. And then I added some browns from my Lorac Pro palette. Um, I... I had high hopes because I have tried some mattes from Tarte before from previous collection, um, holiday collection, not last year but the year before, and they were just really great. I'm, I can't complain. But for some reason I feel like this palette kind of falls short of that. Now another thing that I didn't like were the liner shades. Now I am going to insert a picture um, somewhere here or um, link it to my blog so you guys can see it, but I did swatch these 
um, wet and dry. I do feel like they perform better wet. Obviously, of course, most anything that's an eyeshadow will work better when it's wet. But when you want a more natural look and you want to use a shadow and have more of like a daytime look where it's a little bit softer, not so intense, you most most likely you'll go towards wearing the product dry. Where I feel like the brown, this um, it's called Dream and Chocolate, kind of looked decent dry. It looked even better wet. Um, the dark one, Don't Stand Back, no, Don't Stand Black, <laughs> cute names, um, was kind of, eh, it was kind of not so nice. And it looks pretty intense here, but when you look at it, it is kind of chalky. There is a lot of fallout. I don't know if you guys can sell, but it's, a, it's pretty messy. And then the brown, see, it looks intense here, but honestly, it's deceiving. Looks are very deceiving with this palette. Um, really intense swatching, but for the picture that I took, I had to really kind of pack on the color. I wish that it would work because I could see myself taking this with me on my trips, my weekend getaways, um, vacations, family trips, and things like that, because I can do so much with these colors because there is some variations in them when I apply them on my skin type. On my skin tone, I should say. So, I do feel like if you, like I said, if you are medium, and they kind of stick around for a little while, the colors on your your, your hand. Which, when you see that, you think, oh, these got to be really great. But, blending-wise, I feel like it's really not that great. I would probably give it, like, two stars for blending. Um, the blush, I do like. I am wearing it today. I've been wearing it ever since I got the palette. I love that color. And, um... I wish that they would just make that one on its own, and it's called Elevated. So again, I'm not really impressed. Oh, one thing I do have to talk about um, before I let you guys go is the applicator. It comes with a flat side, and then it comes with a kind of like a crease brush, a little bit on the stiff side, so you can really get into there and get like a cut crease look with it. It's not really good as far as like a fluffy brush, so like something like this one here that really can soften out the edges and blend things together. This is going to keep the color more concentrated in the crease. The um, paddle side, the eyeshadow brush, works fine, inner corner, packing on the lid. Um, I do have to say that if this is the only thing that you had to do your eyes, you could get a complete look using this applicator and these colors, but I definitely had to reach for some of my own brushes. Um, as you saw in the tutorial, if you watched it, I did have to use my own Sigma brushes. It was, it was the Sigma E25 to really soften that out and really kind of help me with the blending because it was kind of difficult. So. I don't really care for applicators, but if that's all I had, it does a job, and it is soft, um, and I believe these are synthetic hairs. So, again, I would probably give this like a three, three out of five. I wouldn't recommend it unless um, you're fair like me, or if you are kind of medium-ish, nothing darker than tan, because then they will start to kind of look ashy if you're um, more deeper complected, and I just feel like they could have done such a better job, and Tarte will come out with a palette sometime for summer or fall, or their Christmas collection, I can't even believe I just said Christmas, <laughs> but they'll come out with a collection here soon, in the next couple months with some eyeshadows, I'm most definitely sure about that. Um, I did see this on QVC, and I got mine at Ulta for $36. QVC has it for a few dollars cheaper, but you do have to pay for shipping. Um, so I'll put the links to some places that carry it. Sephora also has it, so they also have reviews on there as well. So if you want to check those out to kind of get more of an opinion um, and see what other people are saying about it, for me, I definitely would say I have to pass. And that's unfortunate because I love Tarte, and it's just so beautiful, the packaging. So anyways, I hope that this video review was helpful for you and made you kind of think about it or kind of showed you something that you didn't know was out there or kind of made your decision a little bit easier for you. So thanks again for joining me for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the red button, and become part of my family here on YouTube. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's at Glamour by Alexi. I'll put my little username somewhere here. And yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Bye, everybody.